my beautiful people, welcome to this round of Witchy Weed Wednesday with a lot of background car noise and I apologize because we're right next to the highway, but this combination of plants was too good to pass up. So this guy, and I've seen a lot of people ask me or ask various groups what this plant is. And the short and rude answer is a nightmare. Um, this is giant ragweed. Um, the awful plant that causes all of your terrible fall allergies. Um, and it's also its smaller counterpart is available. Actually, there's one right here. This guy. So you'll see a lot more of this guy in your yard. I'm going to get closer to him in a second. But um, what you're looking for are the little signs, which is the botanical term for these little skyscrapers of flowers that you see here. Look like simple leaves in the sense that that's what you might draw if somebody asks you to draw a picture of a leaf. These are also simple leaves. They're just tri-lobed. Tri meaning the three little lobes, like a little hand that come off of here. And you can see that they are opposite leaves coming off the opposite sides of the stem. Now this, if I can dodge the uh, poison ivy that is just everywhere. Its smaller counterpart, the not giant ragweed, and you'll see it's probably a lot more commonly in your yard, is a pinnately compound leaf. If you can see those, how they have a lot of little smaller leaflets coming off each leaf that comes off of the plant, but the flowers are very similar. Now these two are the ones that are causing your awful allergy symptoms. Um, yes, they are edible. Ironically, the genus name for these species is Ambrosia. And then it signifies your name as to what type of ragweed it is, falls behind that. Obviously, if you're somebody who has ragweed allergies, you would most certainly never want to eat these. They do have some not notable medical properties. There also is some suspicion as they are part of the sunflower family. The sunflower family has this cool ability to pull heavy metals such as lead from the soil. So there is some note to rehabilitation of contaminated areas. That is great for ragweed. The problem with ragweed is that if you can see all the yellow stuff way down there, that's kind of in the middle of the screen right now, that is a huge stand of hundreds upon hundreds of individual giant ragweeds. I uh, I pity anybody who lives on this street who happens to be allergic because wow, what a mess. Now I really wanna stress going into the fall that this is not ragweed. This is not causing your allergies. These are species of goldenrod or solidago. The pollen coming off these guys is too large in the granule size to get into your sinuses and cause the irritation that this guy does. So these are actually a really important source of nectar for bees and other pollinating insects like butterflies going into the fall season where a lot of plants have stopped their flowering cycle. And so it can actually be really detrimental to pollinators in your area if you go through your yard or your property and lay just waste to goldenrod stands because you haven't solved the allergy problem, which is this guy. You just hurt the pollinators and have gotten rid of nothing that is going to make your sinuses any less angry and drippy for the rest of the season. So really important distinction, really notable plants. If you have one of these, you have 30. They're everywhere. I hope that's helpful to everybody so you can weed your yard properly going into fall allergy season. And take care, and I will see you all soon. Bye-bye.